Jessica Asagera Gonzalez knows her father's secrets, and her father is Chicago's most wanted drug lord. In a world where women are now taking lead in every aspect of life, it is no surprise that there are women out there who are dangerous enough to lead cartels, drug wars, and commit unimaginable crimes. Today, we will be looking at the top five women that have held dangerous leadership positions in the cartels. The charge is ranging from conspiracy to illegal drug distribution. She also admitted to helping her husband escape. At number five, we have Emma Coronel Aispuro, Mrs. El Chapo. Emma Coronel Aispuro was just 17 in 2006 when she met her would-be husband, El Chapo, at a party thrown by her father, who was also a drug lord. In 2007, Emma Coronel was crowned Miss Coffee and Guava in Canelas. The couple had earlier announced their marriage plans before Emma was crowned, making many people think that El Chapo may have used his influence to make her win the pageant. At her coronation, Emma showed up in a diamond-encrusted crown, and from that time onwards, El Chapo named her his little queen. El Chapo was 50 years old when he proposed to her at the pageant, and the two got married on her 18th birthday, July 3rd, 2007. Emma became known as La Renita to all of her husband's cartel members, and the nickname has stuck with her since then. By the time she was 22, Emma gave birth to a set of twins, Maria and Imali. By the time El Chapo was arrested by Mexican authorities, his empire had grown, and he was one of the world's biggest drug lords. What the authorities didn't know was that his little queen would take over and help her husband to distribute cocaine. Emma also helped El Chapo pass messages to the cartel while he was in prison. She stood by him throughout his trial in federal court in Brooklyn, which lasted from November 2018 to February 2019. In June 2021, 31-year-old Emma Coronel Aispuro pleaded guilty in federal court in Washington, D.C. She admitted she had helped her husband to run the Sinaloa cartel while he was in prison. She also admitted to helping her husband escape from a high-security jail in Mexico in 2015. It is believed that she gave up information about the Sinaloa cartel for a shorter sentence. Number 4. Jessica Oseguera, La Negra Jessica Oseguera, popularly known as La Negra, is the daughter of Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes. Nemesio Oseguera, aka El Mencho, the leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, which is one of the most dangerous and brutal drug trafficking groups in Mexico. The cartel's devious crimes include beheading rivals and dissolving their bodies in acid. El Mencho, who is a known rival of El Chapo, is said to command about 5,000 hitmen. The Drug Enforcement Administration has named him one of the most wanted traffickers and has announced a reward of $10 million for any information that will lead to his capture. Where does La Negra come into all this? Well, in 2021, 34-year-old Jessica Oseguera was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. She was sentenced for helping her father launder his drug money through various businesses, which include a resort, sushi restaurants, and a tequila company. At first, she claimed she had nothing to do with her father's drug business. Oseguera later opened up in a letter to the judge where she said, quote, I ask for forgiveness and say, without hesitation, that I regret everything I did that may have caused any harm. Today, more than ever, it is clear to me that I should have paid more attention to my actions and my actions' consequences. It is believed that she was given a lenient sentence in exchange for giving up information about her father, who is currently a fugitive. Number 3. Clara Elena Laborin, La Señora. Clara Elena Laborin, former beauty queen and wife of Beltran Leva, was treated like a trophy wife, which earned her the nicknames La Señora or The Misses. Beltran Leva went with El Chapo when he left his brother Alfredo to form his own cartel. Beltran soon suspected that El Chapo had snitched to the authorities about his brother, so he began waging a bloody war against the Sinaloa cartel. Beltran started his own cartel, and Clara Laborin became the director of the money laundering aspect of her husband's cartel. In 2010, a rival cartel kidnapped Laborin and sent a photograph of her blindfolded, her hands and feet were tied, and rifles were pointed at her. She was released after 13 days of captivity, but that wasn't enough to make her stop. Instead, Clara just went back to managing the cartel's finances like usual. Four years later, Laborin became the head of the cartel after her husband had been arrested. She led the cartel to become one of the most violent in Acapulco. They fought and brutally murdered anyone in their path to maintain dominance in the city. Soon, Acapulco became Mexico's murder capital. Tourists were caught in between rival cartels and had to witness dead bodies lying around beaches. In 2016, Clara Elena Laborin was arrested by authorities.
Number 2. Sandra Avila Beltran, Queen of the Pacific Sandra Avila Beltran is one you would describe as a legend in the many tales of Mexican drug dealers. She was highly respected by many cartels and is known as Queen of the Pacific. For years, Avila Beltran smuggled cocaine in a fleet of tuna boats that traveled from Manzanillo to California. Avila became an important connection between Mexican cartels and Colombian cocaine traffickers because at that time she was in a relationship with popular Colombian drug dealer Juan the Tiger Diego Espinosa. Born as a third generation drug trafficker, Avila had family ties to powerful cartel leaders like the leader of the Guadalajara cartel, Rafael Caro Quintero. She got married twice to policemen who left the force to join the drug business. Unfortunately, both her husbands died at the hands of hired assassins during Mexican drug wars, but somehow Avila stayed alive. Avila Beltran was good when it came to shooting and protecting herself, hence it was easy for her to move around carrying suitcases filled with millions of dollars while always wearing a gold pendant studded with 83 rubies, 228 diamonds, and 189 sapphires. Avila covered up her business by fronting as a wealthy homemaker who earned a living by renting out properties and selling clothes. In 2002, her son was kidnapped by a rival gang who demanded $5 million in ransom. She paid in full. That was when the police started to wonder how a homemaker could afford such an amount of money. In 2007, Avila was arrested and charged with drug trafficking and money laundering through tanning salons. Before she was taken into custody, Avila convinced the federal agents who came to arrest her to allow her to retouch her makeup because she wanted to look good for her mugshot. She pled guilty to the U.S. authorities, admitting that she had helped the Colombian drug lord to sell drugs. At one of her hearings in Mexico, Avila said to the judge that it's nice to be called a queen. Avila's tale will continue to live because the band Los Tigres del Norte wrote a popular song about her. She also inspired the Mexican telenovela Lorena del Sur, Queen of the South. Avila was released in 2015 and now lives a quiet life in Guadalajara. Number 1. Griselda Blanco, La Marina, Black Widow, Cocaine Godmother At the top of our list is Griselda Blanco, whose criminal activities started early in life. At age 11, she kidnapped a boy and tried to ransom his parents. When they refused to pay, she eventually shot and killed him. By the time she was 13, she had mastered pickpocketing and was also a prostitute. As a teenager, Griselda got married and had three kids with a small-time criminal, but they soon divorced. Then she got married to Alberto Bravo, who was a drug trafficker. They settled in New York and started smuggling cocaine into the U.S. using Blanco's creatively designed lingeries that could carry cocaine without being detected. In 1975, Blanco escaped to Colombia because she was to face drug charges in the U.S. While in Mexico, she got the title Godmother of Cocaine after a shootout between herself and her husband that killed her husband, earning her the nickname Black Widow. In her bid to eliminate competition in Mexico, she became brutal and violent. She started a war that is known as the Cocaine Cowboy Wars. Blanco ordered the death of so many people and the murders were carried out in broad daylight by gunmen on motorcycles. With such cruel killings, Blanco rose to become one of the highest drug dealers of her time. She was allegedly able to smuggle more than three tons of cocaine into the U.S. annually, and soon she was making up to $80 million per month. In 1985, she was arrested and sentenced to 15 years in prison. She continued to run her cartel from inside the prison. 20 years later, she was released and deported to Colombia, where she retired from a life of crime. Blanco has inspired so many books, movies, and shows. She's featured in the 2006 documentary Cocaine Cowboys, and in 2008, she also featured in Cocaine Cowboys 2, Hustlin' with the Godmother. In 2012, she was shot dead by a gunman on a motorcycle as she was stepping out of a shop in Medellin. And that's a wrap on this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. More video